So we're continuing with our discussion or sharing about the tree of yoga. I'm not sure if you've managed to get the book yet. Um, BKS Iyenga, The Tree of Yoga. And um, we're just going chapter by chapter each week. Um, we started with the roots last week. So the roots, and literally that is just two pages. And now we're doing the trunk, which is another two pages. So if you were to read it before the class, it would be quite nice because you'd get a sense of what we're going to be doing in the class. Um, what I'm experiencing, though, by going through it is that actually each chapter I could do about four classes on. <laughs> Um, so it's quite difficult to just think, no, I'm just going to brush a brush on it and then move on. Um, but it's possible that maybe these eight weeks we will just cover one chapter each week as a kind of a brush stroke. And then perhaps um, in future classes we'll revisit in more detail. Um, but I just thought it's a great introduction to this lovely book, which really connects yoga to our life living in the world um, and so last week we looked at so let's sit um, in fact I'd like us to just start in Baddha Konasana straight away and then I'll talk you through it let's leave out the chanting to begin with today um, so in Baddha Konasana we're going to have the feet at the wall so if you see you're going to have your toes turned out at the wall and your bum right into the wall your buttocks and then your arms extended. But what I don't want to happen is that, that this happens. Can you see I've arched my back, my ribs are poking up, my pelvis has dropped, but my knees have gone down. So I don't want you to do that. I want you to be on the sacrum, ribs quiet, lower back long, and the knees will be slightly higher because of that. Okay, so that's Baddha Konasana, lying down, Sukta Baddha Konasana. And then I can talk to you, but you're still preparing for what we're doing for the class. And your toes are going to be turned out like that at the wall. They're like that. Spread. So lie yourself down. And I want you to be there for a good five minutes because we're going to be working a bit with the hips and the middle back today. So just check that that's it. So you've turned your toes out and just keep that lower back really sober. And that word sober is a great one with in terms of the body because it also connects with the mind. So that lower back is broad and releasing towards the floor. You're not letting your ribs push up to the ceiling, those front ribs. You're letting the diaphragm relax and you're spreading your back. So the lower back is sober. The lumbar spine is not kicking up. It's broad. And the abdomen is spreading and releasing down. So in our asana, our yoga postures, we're actually training the body, the organs of action and these organs of action are the legs the arms organs of excretion organs of generation and the tongue so we are bringing awareness to the body and training the limbs, training our awareness, training the limbs. So that's what we looked at last week, is the roots of yoga in how we behave. And it's our organs of action that do the action, aren't they? Like stealing, your mind might want to steal something from a shop or um, I don't know, steal something from, or even just to take the last piece of cake on the table when everyone's sitting around and you know that it's kind of everyone wants it and you just go and take it. 
so that's a mild version of um, uh, stealing. Um, although that's actually a niyama, but, but in terms of um, actions, our body are the things that do the action. And I think that's really important to recognize, like, for example, our tongue. You know, it's the tongue that says the words, those nasty words to someone. So, yes, we try and control the thoughts. But at the end of the day, if we start to train our tongue, if we pacify the tongue through our awareness in our yoga practice, we're starting to work at least from the outside in. And that's the way that we practice in yoga. We're kind of working from the outside in. The arms are extended above your head in Urdhva Hastasana if you can. That's it, palms to the ceiling. So maybe I should read this and maybe it says it slightly better than I do. Naturally, the organs of action then control the organs of perception and the mind. If one intends to do harm, so that's the violence, non-violence, ahimsha that we talked of last week. If one intends to do harm, but the organs of action refuse to do it, the harm will not be done. The yogis therefore begin with control of the organs of action. Yama is thus the root of the tree of yoga and you may have experiences where your mind saying oh go on go on you can take it you know like you're at a nice hotel and there's a bathrobe or something you think oh i can slip that in my bag and you you go to grab it but your hand is the action if you can control that hand and it, so we're kind of sanctifying our body in the asana and, and we control your hand that doesn't that, that does that action and then then you're not then you're not taking it's a non-violent action so you're practicing yoga in that moment exhale to soften your belly And then bring your arms down by your side, bring your knees in, and then we're doing Sukta Palangustasana number two, and then Pavrita. So take your strap, you're going to stay with the wall exactly as you are, um, but have a, just a quick look at the screen so you can see how it's going to go. So your feet are at the wall, and then Holding the strap with the right hand, we extend the right leg out to the right, keeping the grip of the outer hip in. And then we take the leg across, swap hands, keep this outer hip long, this hip long, so you're not shortening the waist, and then take the leg across, but keep the left foot at the wall. So you can see I'm not taking the leg very far, because I've really got to work to keep that outer hip away and I'm keeping the left foot at the wall. And then again, we repeat, we're gonna do it a couple of times on the right and then we'll do a couple of times on the left. So press your feet into the wall, raise up the right leg, hold the strap with the right hand. And then extend the leg to the right. Open up the inner thigh to the inner heel. Try and keep the sides of the body the same length, so don't shorten that right outer hip. And then exhale, raise the leg up, 
swap hands and take the leg over to the left and keep the right stretch the right arm out to the side Keep the left foot on the wall. And then out to the side again. So swap hands. So the roots of yoga, the yamas, the social observances, and take the leg out to the right, holding the strap with the right hand, are Ahimsha, non-violence, so managing aggressiveness, truthfulness, so we talked about truthfulness last week, like in the postures, what, what am I actually doing, what's the truth here, is my right leg straight, is my left foot pressing into the wall, is my left arm out to the side at shoulder level, can I press that arm down and then with my exhalation, can I release the abdomen away from the right leg? So there's kind of the clarity in the truth to yourself of what's actually happening. And then bring the leg up and take it across the other way. So swap hands. Then the other roots are asteya and aparigraha which is basically like not stealing, not hoarding, not wanting what we don't have. So simply that means trying not to compare ourselves with other people, which is really difficult. I find that really difficult because you look at other people and think, oh, I'd like to be able to do that. Oh, I wish I could have that. So it's really important to try to not feed those thoughts and to bring our attention back to this leg on the floor, this foot pressing into the strap, lengthening the right outer hip away from you, releasing the abdomen now to the right. So keep bringing your attention back to this present moment, to your body, to your breathing, to help manage thoughts like comparisons. And then bring the leg back up. And let's swap legs. So we'll do the same on the left. You may need to wiggle in a bit closer to the wall. So that right foot's on the wall. And raise the left leg. So with these leg extensions, try to keep both sides of the body equal. So you're not shortening the left side. So in that sense, one can say, let the leg not be greedy and overpower the body. Let the hip have... Uh, let the leg, make sure the leg presses away from you so that the left side of the body is still as long as the right side. So that in itself is also an action. So the left leg is up to the ceiling. We're holding with the left hand. But let the leg not be greedy or let us not be greedy thinking, oh, the, we're better and stronger and will be liked more if I bring my leg closer to my head. So you have to manage these thoughts and think, no, I'm going to have my legs straight and I'm going to make sure I only bring my leg as close enough as it means that I can keep the right side of my waist long. So that's your truthfulness and your non-greediness. And then extend the leg to the side. So I'm just giving ideas of how they relate into the postures. Enjoy that length on the inner thigh, but make sure that outer hip is gripping in. And then with your exhalation, bring the leg up, swap hands and stretch it across. Keep the right outer hip away from you, move, sorry, the left outer hip away from you, move the right inner groin down, try and broaden the front of the pelvis. Good.
and bring the leg back up and lower the leg down, join the feet and then roll over, let go of the strap, roll over to your side and we'll come into Adho Mukha Svanasana. Let's come into it from Chaturanga so we can really feel the firmness of the limbs. So these are the hands and the feet. The legs and the arms, remember, are the organs of action. So see how we're really working them equally in this pose, this symmetrical pose. So toes are tucked under, hands are by your armpits, and press the thighs to the ceiling. Really feel that firmness in the legs. Harness the power of the legs. Roll the shoulders up, squeeze the elbows in, and then with your exhalation, press your hands into the floor and stretch up and back into Adol Mukha Svanasana. Keep that presence in your palms and in the balls of your feet. Then press the thighs back. Don't worry about getting the heels down. Instead, just focus on stretching out the legs, getting the lift in the hips, but don't lift the heels unnaturally so. But what I'm saying is don't push the heels down because you want the arches of the feet to lift, the inner arches. And if you try and get the heels down too quickly, sometimes that just means that you drop the inner arches. So have a look at your feet and check that the inner arches are lifting. And then step forwards and we're going to come into Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Let's have our feet as wide as the mat because it's going to give you space to lift up the inner leg. So sometimes when we've been sitting, the legs become a bit um, undefined. So have those feet to the edge of the mat, lift up the inner legs for the, and extend your trunk down. And then just let your head go. So we spend a lot of our day, can often spend a lot of our day living in our head, especially our job maybe requires a lot of head stuff. So in this position, release the head and catch hold of the elbows and extend your trunk down. Let the head become quiet. Make sure you're not leaning back. So bring your weight forward, right? Change the fold of the elbows. And then bring your hands to your hips. Make your thighs firm. Inhale to come all the way up. Then grab your strap. Pajra Utita Hasta Padangustasana, which is a standing leg raise. I think I will just adjust the camera so you can see a bit more of my face. <laughs> so you're going to work with a chair or something to put your heel on. This is a really good support for me, but I will show you with a chair in case you don't have a um, ledge. So you place your metal chair at the wall with the back of the chair at the wall and you put a blanket over the bar. If you don't have a metal chair and you just have a standard chair, then you'll probably want to put your foam pads on top of the seat of the chair, like that. Okay, so we're going to raise the right leg. So I'll show you with my left leg. So if you're working with the blocks, this is what it's going to look like. You've got the foot on the blocks, the legs are straight, the standing leg is directly under the pelvis and you're stretching your arms. So this is how to work with the chair. But if you're able to place the foot up on the top of the chair, then at the wall, then that's good too, like this. So have a look round and see what you've got and raise your right leg first. So join your feet and have your support to the right 
side of your body. Join your feet, stand tall, and then raise the right leg up. Place the foot on the support, place the strap round the foot. Hold the belt with the right hand and stretch the left arm into the room. Be careful that nothing's going to fall off. We're taking the leg out to the side. Place the strap, straighten your legs and stretch your arms wide. Feel your body as a whole. So we're waking up these legs and arms. Bringing clarity to the limbs, to these organs of action. Press the standing thigh back. Press the right foot into the strap and pull the strap to lift the chest. Let your body breathe. Grip that outer right thigh into the hip. And change legs. Place a strap. Place the foot, place the strap. Stand tall, stretch the right arm into the room and spread the abdomen. Make sure the body's upright, extend into your fingertips. Feel the inner thigh lengthening to the foot and the outer thigh gripping back into the hip. And bring the legs and arms down. Come to standing. Be in Tadasana. Join your feet. Firm your thighs. Squeeze the outsides of the shins in, especially the thick part of the shin. Press the outer shin in. Lift up the front of the pelvis. Lift the side chest. Then Badanguliasana. Interlace the fingers. Spread the palms forward and stretch up. Long, have a long side body, open up your armpits, press your arms back. And change the interlace. And stretch up. So the fifth of these um, yamas, which I haven't mentioned yet, is brahmacharya, which is uh, kind of controlling of our energy, which can include sexual energy. So just feel even in this tadasana position how there's this real clarity in the work of the legs and there's a sense of lifting of the pelvic floor a feeling of the coccyx moving in the sides of the waist long so we're so kind of sanctifying the body with our awareness with our intention and bring the arms down and this is all part of um, well part of shifting from seeing our body perhaps as a place purely for sensual pleasures and actually seeing our body as an object of prayer so we can have these differing relationships. Then Ada Uttanasana, place your hands on the top of the chair and stretch back. Lengthen those hips back, move the inner thighs back. So those are the roots 
of yoga. And now we're going to shift towards the trunk. Exhale to feel really long in your body. Keep those inner thighs moving back. And inhale to come up and we're just going to do a couple of seated postures so come to sitting Bharadvajasana one sit on a foam pad have a foam pad behind you so roll the right leg under stretch the left leg back so the right leg is in uh, Swastikasana, the left leg is in Virasana, and then turn to the right. So keep that long side body and turn. So descend the legs, ascend the trunk, and turn. Then feel with each exhalation that you're able to turn a little more. Feel the lift in the chest. And can you bring a bit of movement to those ribs? Can you feel your ribs? Can you move these left, right. left ribs in? To the body exactly yeah put your you can put your hand there this bit just behind this exactly Alison is this spot you've got to move it in and it kind of sticks out doesn't it but try and move it in this one oh, and center <laughs> and the other side so swastikasana with the this leg and virasana on the right Turn. So descend the legs, ascend the trunk as evenly as you can and turn. And then again, acknowledge the bits which are kind of stiffer. So it's that bit behind this right armpit, those ribs, move them in. You'll be grateful for doing it in this pose in a few poses time. Every action has a consequence. This is karma. And center. Stretch the legs forward. Other side. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, turn. So we've taken on this endeavor to get some mobilization in these ribs in the shoulder blade so as you turn take your attention to the shoulder blades and the ribs move this left shoulder blade into the body cut the back ribs in as you turn and the left shoulder goes back akiko remember we did that in that session yes And center so tapas is one of the things one of the trunks one of the aspects of the trunk of yoga which is a burning zeal it's taking on a commitment to do something so that's what we're doing right now we're taking on this commitment to move those shoulder blades in to get some movement in the rib cage so that the Left shoulder goes back, the right shoulder bone goes back, but that shoulder blade goes forward into the body, forwards towards the left. Turn, turn, turn. And centre. Straighten out your legs, carrying on with Bhadavajasana, but going into number two. 
So this left leg comes back into Virasana. And this right leg, well, for now, we'll just bring it into like a Baddha Konasana a new, or Janu Shishasana. Yeah. Let it be Janu Shishasana, so let the ankle rest on the ground. Can you see? Knee out to the side, but foot's on the inner thigh. Normally this will be a half Padmasana, but because it's early on in the class, we'll do it with a Janu Shishasana leg. And then we turn this way. So bring the hand to the leg, bring the other hand behind and turn. And then see, can you reach across now to the knee? Reach your other hand further back and move this left shoulder blade into the back. Cut it into the back. Lift the chest up. Yeah, so you're almost arching up and centre the other side. Burning zeal, such a great term. It's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to wake up every day and do at least 10 minutes meditation for the whole month. That's tapas. It's, I'm going to, that's a resolve to do something. Or I'm going to sign up for Thursday evening yoga class and I'm going to attend all four weeks. That is also tapas. Everyone has a different level of what they're taking on. And then turn, so hand to the leg. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn. Turn the belly, turn the chest, turn the shoulders. Ease off a little bit and now swing that arm across so it's even further across. And you may need to slightly lift up the knee a bit if the leg is too far away you can let the knee come up into the hand and then turn and center then stretch your legs out then upavishta konasana So you can stay sitting on a height if you need or sit flat. We're going to do a twist. We're going to carry on with the twist. So press your legs down. Make contact between the back of the thigh and the floor. And then we're going to turn. So bring your left hand in front, right hand behind. Inhale, lift up. Exhale to turn. So it doesn't feel quite such a big turn, does it? Because the pelvis is more stable. But see, the, see how the abdomen is quite free. So can you move the abdomen? Can you move the dorsal in? Move the neck vertebra in? And then turn the head so you're looking over the right shoulder. And the other side. So lift up, legs down, lift up, and turn. I quite like holding the mat. By pulling the mat, you get a little bit more movement. Yes, that's it. Be on the sinting bones and lift, keep the inner groins down. Breathe out to turn and unravel back to the centre and then just a little short turn to the right just to bring yourself back to the centre and then back to the centre. Uh, Ike, you didn't turn to the right. Well, I did. Um, you did? Okay, cool. Because you, you just sort of unravel. Because so, what happens is we do really long and then we do really long and then we're still slightly leaning this way so we just need it just a little bit that way to um, bring ourselves back to centre. <laughs> so let's go to dog pose again. So place your hands on the floor, step back. Lift your hips up. 
the key can be careful that you're not uh, over straightening the arms. Spread the balls of your feet and stretch the heels back. And then move the shoulder blades in, move the dorsal spine in. And then coming into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. So bring your pelvis forwards. Keep your toes tucked under. Bring your pelvis forwards. Move your coccyx in. Lift the front of the pelvis shoulders back. Exhale, come up. So the legs stay straight. We're back in downward facing dog pose now, everyone. So the legs stay straight. But keep the thighs pressing back throughout so the knees don't touch the floor at all so exhale keep the thighs pressing back keep the legs poker straight as you bring the pelvis forwards and roll the shoulders up tighten the knees knees away from the floor exhale downward facing dog breathe as you move last one so again, trying to get some mobility in the pelvis and up in that chest. Keep the legs firm as you swing forwards with the pelvis and up with the chest. Forwards and up. Tighten the knees. Roll the shoulders back. Good. Lift the side chest. Exhale. Downward facing dog pose. And then step forwards to stand up. Come to Tadasana. And then take a cork brick or a foam block. Uh, actually, no, uh, if you're working with foam blocks, have four foam blocks. Okay, so place your four foam blocks or your brick on the back right hand side of your mat. Yeah, excellent, you got a brick. Hooray! So we're going to go into Pavrita Trikonasana and I'm going to quickly show it to you. In this posture, remember, we turn to face the small end of the mat. And this back leg needs to stay strong and straight. So this knee shouldn't buckle, just like in do upward dog. I was saying, keep the thigh back. So same happens here. And then we come forwards and place the hand on the brick next to the ankle, press down with the feet, press the thigh back. And then remember we touched our shoulder blade when we were doing the twist a few poses ago so it's that spot can you see it's sticking out at the moment so move it in move it in and then we do the other side so let's have a go be in tadasana facing the screen Look straight ahead. Even breathing. So Tadasana again, almost reaffirming all those five yamas, the roots of yoga. This management of the organs of action. Standing in peace. Standing in truth. and let my body and the energy of my being be for a higher goal. And then bring your hands into your chest, bend your knees and jump to step your legs wide, extend your arms, turn the left foot in, the right leg out, turn to face the small end of your mat. 
So there's a turning that happens in that back leg and the pelvis. Excellent. And now tighten that back thigh so that the knee doesn't sag down. And move that coccyx in big time, everyone, especially your Kiko. And then with your exhalation, swing your left hand down onto the brick and move your left shoulder blade into your body and stretch the top arm up. Some of you might be able to have your, uh, Alison and Akiko, maybe you could even have the brick a bit lower. Just see what that feels like, whether it gives you more space to move that left shoulder blade in and to reach that right chest up to the ceiling to turn. And then inhale and swing the left arm to come up to face this way. Turn your body and rest your arms down. Well done. And join your legs together. <laughs> Let's do the left side. Alison, you were correct. Having the brick high was better for you. Akiko, having the brick lower was better for you. Other side. Jump. Spread the arms, reach to the fingertips, let your body be bright, let it shine brightly into the room you're in. Then turn the right foot in, turn the left leg out. Turn your body, to your leg and your pelvis to face the full end of your and swing that right hand onto the brick and move that shoulder blade in as you stamp the back thigh back. Move the shoulder blade in as you stamp that right thigh back and the heel down and reach up with the top arm. Inhale and come up with the right arm. Spread the arms wide. Turn to face this way. And then step. Or jump your legs back to the center. Excellent. Good. Okay, we move our blocks away now. We're coming to Pajvottanasana. And we're going to do it in this manner. Can you see I've interlaced my fingers behind my back? Let me come a bit closer to the screen so that you can see that when we come to halfway, my shoulders are up. Can you see they're not down, they're up. So I'm kind of rolling the arms up. And then as I extend forwards, my shoulders are still rolling up, but I'm extending down. And then when I stretch the neck, my shoulders are still rolling up. So it's not like this, can you see? rolling up but I'm not um, my hands are down on my buttocks I'm not kind of doing this sort of thing um, with practicing shoulders that we want to be able to have when we're doing Pashima Namaskar Pashima Namaskar is much harder um, so we're practicing it with the interlace especially because that left shoulder is mine, as you could probably see, is really stiff at the moment. So let's do with the interlace of the fingers. So be in the center of your mat and stand tall. So let's kind of redefine our relationship with our Tadasana. So we're affirming our roots, these yamas, these basic ways of behaving, which we're practicing when we're doing yoga postures. It's not like we're imposing it, we're practicing it. And bring your hands into your chest, bend your knees, jump wide. Spread the chest, keep the chest broad, interlace the fingers. Just roll the shoulders back, but keep your hands on your buttocks. Turn the left foot in, turn the right leg out. Again, we're facing the small end of our mat. And then extend forwards, 
along your leg and keep the shoulder bones up. Yeah, we'll go over the right leg first. So keep the hands on your buttocks. Keep your hands on your buttocks and roll your shoulders up and then stretch your neck down. So just feel how you're not allowing the shoulders to roll down with your neck. Can you roll the shoulders up a little bit more there, Ari? It's, it's tricky, yeah. Go just practice whatever you can find. Then with your exhalations, press your feet down and inhale to come up. And the other side. So turn the right foot in, left leg out. Remember, this is a practice. This is not a perfection. So we've got to practice in order to get anywhere. This is our tapas. So inhale, turn to the right, so turn, turn to the left. So turn the right foot in, turn the left leg out. So the arms are kind of, the hands are on the buttocks. The arms are not completely straight so that you still keep a breath in your upper back. But the shoulders are back and extend forwards and feel that the collarbones are still broad and you're still lifting the front shoulder and drawing the trapezius back as you stretch the neck down so especially at that last moment when you take the head down you've really got to work to lift the front chest kiki you're getting it very well actually but bring now bring your head to your leg Yes, yes. You see, this is practicing for your Jalandhara Bandha, isn't it? It's not exactly the same shape, but it's working the shoulders in a different position than the neck is going. Well done. Exhale, everyone. And with your inhalation, lift your face, your chest, and come all the way up. And then turn to the front. Now, Prasarita Padottanasana. So release the arms. So if you feel up for doing Pashima Namaskar behind your back, do. As we haven't done many shoulder extensions, you may find it's too strong at this point in time. And then you can do the posture with the hands on the floor. Okay. So bring the hands up the back into Pashima Namaskar. Don't require it to go all the way up at this stage if it's too difficult. But once we start to extend forwards and down, then you can slide the hands higher up the back. Press the back ribs in, shoulder blades in, and release your trunk down. If it feels too strong, then you can have your hands on the floor. Head down. Back ribs in, shoulder blades in. Good. Release the head and neck. Exhale, and with your inhalation, lift your face, your chest to come up. Release your hands, be careful, come up straight. And then Good, let's come to sitting now. So sit on a uh, we're going to do Malasana, so we create a podium. This is a sort of standard way of doing Malasana. Two blocks and one in the middle, like that. That's what I'm going by a podium. Just as a reference for Ike, do, do this method. Yes, yesterday I did another method, but this is how I was taught to teach it for an assessment. It's just a neat way of doing it. But I find that sometimes just one block in the middle is not high enough for people to sit on. They need to sit on even more height than that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys. So let's just sit sideways to the camera and stretch your legs forward. The reason why I'm showing you sideways, because I want you to see my back. 
So, so how the back is lifting. So from here, from Dandasana, you're going to bring your heels up and rest them on the block. Can you do that? Then hold your shins and lift your back. Can, can you see my lower back? You could think, oh no, she's sitting up okay. But not really. Look how much more I can lift up. So lift your lower back. And then tip yourself forward so you're on your heels and stretch your arms forward. So your knees are together and your arms are stretching forwards and your bottom is just off those block, that block. Then separate your knees and stretch forward between your legs. Try to move your back ribs in as you extend forwards and down between your legs. Coccyx in, hands on the floor. Hands on the ground. Exhale, inhale, lift your face, bring your knees together, stretch your arms forward, and then bring your buttocks down and stretch your legs out in front of you. So if you feel that you can work without such a big height, then take a folded blanket or a bit of folded mat. So sit on the blanket. So again, last night I showed with a folded mat, it looks more efficient if you're, can you see how I'm sitting on the blanket with which I'm going to then put my heels, yeah? So if you feel like you'll be able to get your heels down on a lower support, sit on something lower like a blanket and then bring your heels up onto that lift and then stretch your arms forward and lift your trunk up so don't sink down lift up, buttocks off the support, stretch your, can you see how the angle of my shins is forward? Good, then separate your knees and stretch forwards and down, head right down, stretch the sides of your body on the insides of your knees, separate your knees wide enough so you can start to bring your body between your legs. That's it. Stretch the shins forward, buttocks in the air, not on the not sitting down. Go down, go down. Good. And then inhale to come up, knees together, arms forwards, and then hands down and sit down back in dandasana. Well done. So this posture we can go to the next stage where we take the arms underneath the shins out to the side and bring the trunk down. So you're really spreading your shoulders as wide and you can't, you can't really see. Spread your shoulders wide as you take the arms wide in front of the in front of the shins. So sit on your support, place your heels and come up, lift up, move your shoulder blades in like you've been doing all class. Then separate your knees and reach forwards. Then turn the palms to face down and swim the arms wide out to the side and keep spreading the arms and the shoulder bones wide, but squeeze the knees in towards the armpits. Head down. Hands on the floor. In front of the shins. That's it. Arms wide, Alison, out to the side, but down on the floor in front of your shins. 
like that. Exhale. Yes, now you got it. Inhale, swing your arms forwards and lift your chest, extend the arms forwards, lift your back, bring your hands to your blanket or your blocks and stretch your legs forward and sit up tall. So what did that posture feel like? Let us go into Paschimottanasana now, which has a similar feeling. So have, if you need to sit on a height, sit on a height. <laughs> I'm showing you sideways, but ideally my mat would be this way around. So Paschimottanasana is this part. So take what height you need in order to get this movement. I'm doing it with my feet apart because my spine is a little bit um, it's not quite comfortable today. So feet apart to give you a bit more space. Bolster on the legs. If you know that you're stiffer um, and that a bolster's not high enough, then you could always put um, more height underneath. Then place your belt around your feet. So we're gathering up the organs, pressing the legs down, and we're pulling, pushing the feet into the strap, pulling the strap to lift the chest coccyx into the body, pelvic floor lifting, chest broad, inhale, then with your exhalation extend forwards, suck the legs back into the hip socket and lengthen your waist forward, spread your elbows wide and rest your forehead on the support and close your eyes. Uh, Alison, just sit up on a couple of blocks and your body will go forwards much more easily because you're pretty much there. Hold your feet, elbows wide. Hold your feet. And keep going. Interlace the fingers if you want to. But hold the feet and spread the elbows, spread the back. Close your eyes and look inwards. And feel how the organs of action are now helping to draw in the organs of perception. That's it, so concave back, Alison. Have you got a block under your feet? Bank it, okay. And then exhale and extend forwards, hinging at the hips, hip length into the hip socket. That's it. Slide the heels wider and then hold the feet instead of the strap. Just slide the heels out. That's it and slide the bolster a little towards you. Just bring the bolster to you. Slide the bolster to you so you can rest your head. There we go. Draw inwards. Relax the shoulders out. And with your next inhalation, lift your face, your chest, and come up. Okay, so we're going to come to Kormasana now. So I'm going to, let's all do it on a bolster, because it's quite nice to have a bit of height. 
and we're going to roll up our mat so our feet end up on the floor. So I'll show it to you just in case you're not sure. So this pose, the knees are bent to start off with. I stretch up, go forwards between the knees like we did in the Malasana. But at this point, I try to get forwards a little bit more. So I've really got to work in this hinge point of the hips and the groins have really got to soften for me to go down. If there's congestion there, don't force it and just practice it again. So forwards, 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 forwards and down. But the chest is as broad as it can be. And then in due course, not today, then you take the arms under the legs and again stretch them wide. Okay, so sit and we're just sort of getting giving it a try for today because this is the tortoise and is a perfect posture for experiencing that sense of drawing inwards like a turtle drawing in his legs. For us, we draw in the senses of perception. So sit on your bolster, be on your heels, and it's quite nice to be able to slide, you see, because you start off with the feet close, and then once you've nestled down, you can stretch the legs forwards a bit more. Can you see how my legs are going forwards? If you feel that your back is forward, then you can be in Adha Mukha Svanasana. So heels on the floor, have the knees quite high up, lift your back and extend forwards. Then slide the heels forward and keep lengthening the side body, moving the spine into the body, spreading the back and going forward. Squeeze the knees in towards the armpits and extend forwards and down. That's it. Thighs into the, knee, into the armpits. Head down. 10 seconds, breathe, drawing in the ears, the eyes, smell, touch, taste. Exhale and inhale to come up. Sit tall and stretch out your legs in front of you. So we come to Adho Mukha Svanasana now. So cross your legs over, place your hands on the floor, step back. Have your feet nice and wide so that you can spread your back and stretch up. Perhaps you can feel how this Adho Mukha Svanasana is different from the first one you did at the beginning of the class. And exhale to come down. And we're coming into Viparita Karani now with the feet at the wall. So place your mat at the wall and have your bolster at the wall with a small gap and you can put your brick between the wall and your bolster like this and then you're going to lie down with your buttocks up on the bolster and the legs up the wall So release your hips down towards that brick, stretch your legs up and spread your chest, spread your back, spread your abdomen.
descend your buttocks the other side of the bolster. And just be here. Allow your legs to rest down into your pelvis. Let your abdomen completely soften. You can let your knees be bent if your legs are on the sofa. I'd say probably just let your legs relax after a bit. If, if you're comfortable like that, stay like that. But in due course, rest your legs as well so your back can spread. Spread the soles of your feet. Make sure that the inner leg is extending up as much as the outer leg. Allow the blood to move around your body, cleaning, clearing, rejuvenating. And settle here as you are. Allowing the body to breathe itself. So the trunk of the tree begins with this cleansing, the sap that moves up and down, feeding the tree. This is the cleansing action of yoga. So that every day the way that we live, we're trying to clean and purify our homes, our body and our internal system. Yet within this endeavour to purify, we're also cultivating contentment. That we are lovable as we are. I am whole as I am. And within this contentment, we are practicing cleanliness, purity, purif actions of purification. So with this exhalation, just acknowledging that I'm whole as I am.
And as you breathe in, welcome the energizing, purifying inhalation, bringing in fresh air, oxygen into the body, nourishing you, renewing you. Half a minute more. And then with your next exhalation, you're going to gently come down. So bend your knees and rest your feet on the wall. And then slide down till your buttocks are on the floor, the other side of the bolster. And cross your legs on the bolster. Change the cross of your legs. to your side to come up and we're going into Situ Bandha Sarvangasana, four blocks under the buttocks and the feet to the wall. If you want to work with a bolster you can under the pelvis. So when I do it with a bolster I tend to put a couple of blocks under the bolster to make it higher but my bolster is particularly flat you might find that you actually just want to work with the bolster itself, horizontal, or you can work with four foam pads. But I'll show you the method with the bolster in case you want to try it sometime. So the feet are slightly below the hips and have the feet apart so that the spine can move into the body so again the legs and the arms are in service to the rest of the body rather than our legs and our arms in service just to the wants the whims of the mind there's good desires klishta our klishta desires not so positive desires. So we need to somehow find the wisdom to know the difference. <laughs> so see you in a few lifetimes for that one, but at least we can try. So press your feet into the wall, press your thighs down and lift and spread your chest. And feel, hopefully you can feel how because you're pressing your legs down and they're really firm, you can feel the spine moving into the body. It should feel quite a relief, quite enjoyable after the forward bends. It should feel nice. And the abdomen spreads. Tuck the shoulders under, roll the arms out. So we have cleanliness, sculpture. So feel your body breathing and allow the blood and the energy to flow, cleaning your whole body, detoxifying. And rest here content with how you are right now. Having a feeling of gratitude. And 
and begin to draw in the senses. So the eyes are looking inwards towards the heart, the ears are drawing in. And the sense of touch is almost like you're just feeling the air on your skin. the air in your nostrils and relax the tongue so it rests in the lower palate And may you have a good taste, the taste of good action in your mouth. down whenever you want to, whenever you feel that the pose is no longer bright and active. If you feel that there's any discomfort, just come down. Let your eyes rest back in their sockets. Draw inwards. Listen to the wisdom of the heart. And then with your next exhalation, bend your knees and rest your feet to the ground. Then lift your hips and move your supports out to the side or if you're on a bolster, you can just slide back till your buttocks are on the ground. And just rest your legs on the bolster. Feel your lower back spreading to the ground. And then let's come to Shavasana. If you want to have a small blanket or a bolster under the knees, you can do. Start with your knees bent and wait till your back is released and the abdomen and the organs there also have that sense of softness and release and then extend the legs. So extend your legs in your own time. If you've extended your legs and you feel actually no it's not quite ready then you can bend the legs again. Then close your eyes and look within. And just begin this Shavasana by checking in a moment of observation, self-observation. Just witnessing how your body feels. Thoughts are here, what feelings are here, the mood 
of your body right now. This is central to yoga, the trunk of the tree. Self-study. What's happening here and now? Where am I at? And can I just be here with this contentment, with this awareness, be with myself? And allow the energy to move through me, allow my breathing to move through me. body to release, relax, let go. Gently bring your awareness back into the room. And bring your hands to rest on your abdomen. Roll over. 
to the right side. And come up to sitting in Sukhasana, cross legs. So we release the legs down, ascend the trunk, and let's close by chanting Om together. Om is the pranava, the resonance, the sound of the higher principle that is within all life. So connecting ourselves to this presence that we are connected to deep within ourselves. So this is the last of the five aspects of the niyamas, the trunk of the tree, is this devotion, this connection to a higher principle beyond our own ego. It can be in any form or it can be formless. So close your eyes and allow this presence to be uh, created and acknowledged in our warm the pranava, the sound of consciousness. Exhale. to this divinity within your own heart, giving thanks, and rest your hands down, and then opening your eyes, raise your head up. Namaste. Thank you all for our topsy-turvy session. <laughs> we ended at the beginning. <laughs> So have a great weekend and enjoy your holiday, Kiko. And I look forward to seeing you guys really soon.